To create a brand new window from scratch, go to the big R, pull it down, and then choose new, and then family. From here, browse to the family templates. And because windows are always uh, located inside walls, you want to choose uh, the generic model wall-based. This opens up a new model for you to start um, creating your window in. And before you do anything, um, I always like to start out with a generic model and then choose my category. But um, it automatically starts you out in a generic category. So what you need to do is you need to tell Revit that this is going to be a window by changing it to the window category. So then go to the category button under family categories and parameters. And instead of generic, pull down and choose window. Now that the component's been defined as belonging to the window category, to make this a parametric model, you're going to have to lay down reference planes um, that are dimensioned, and these are what become your parameters for your window to change size. Uh, a lot of this has been covered in the previous video on how to make basic families. Since a lot of this is the same, I'll try to skip through some of the stuff I've already covered once. So to start laying down these reference planes, um, it's best to go to the um, front side or the placement side of the model. So under elevations, go to placement side. And I'll lay down reference planes that'll be the left and right and the front and or the top and the bottom of the window. So reference plane that'll be the left side, I'll select it and move it into position with a temporary uh, construction dimension and then just mirror it over. I'll lay down a reference plane that'll serve as the top and I can copy it down to make one for the bottom. and then move it into position. Now I'll lay down reference planes that will serve as the um, frame thickness. So I'll just select the existing one and move it over two inches. And the bottom. Now, um, we can go ahead and throw some center mullions in here. And just to keep it simple, we'll set it up so that the it's always equally spaced. So I'll lay down a reference plane that will serve as the middle. And to get that centered in there, I want to equally constrain it. So I'll use my dimension tool. Starting from the top, click the middle reference plane, and then the bottom click to place it, and then hit EQ, and that will bring it in the middle for me. Now I want to um, place a reference plane for the thickness of that mullion for those edges, and do it for the vertical one as well. And mirror it over. So you can see this is going to be a window with four panes of glass in it, uh, divided by these center mullions. I've got all the reference planes laid out um, in elevation. I want to switch to a plan view and lay them out to uh, start defining this window's depth. So in a floor plan view under reference level, I'll start laying them out for the frame front and back. I don't want to lay them inside the wall because it'll be hard to read and work with. Um, I can lay them down outside of the wall and then just shift them in later. So my first reference plane, I'll lay down kind of outside of the wall behind it. This can be our front face of the frame, and then I'll copy it out four inches. This is the back edge of our frame, and now I'll create a middle one. Then I want to lay out reference planes for the edges of the glass itself. So selecting the middle one, I'll just copy it up half inch and mirror it for the back face of the glass. So now I have the front edge of the frame and the back, the center of our window system, and then reference planes laid down for the front and back of our glass that's going to sit in our window. Now that all the reference planes are laid down, defining our edges of our window system, it's time to start dimensioning them so that we can make parameters out of them. So since I'm already in the floor plan view, um, I'll lay down dimensions that will become its depth parameter. 
So you're grabbing the uh, dimension tool, starting from the front, go to the back and place. Highlight escape it a couple times to get out of the dimension tool and then select it again. And then under its label, you can see there's no parameter existing already for its depth. So I'll choose add parameter to create my own and then call it frame depth and hit okay. Now I wanna make sure that the center line is always in the center of the frame. So I need to place another dimension um, to equally constrain it. Using the dimension tool, I'll go from the front to the center reference plane to the back, pull it out to place it, and then click the EQ button. Then I wanna place a parameter for the glass thickness. So using the dimension tool, I'll grab the front and the back, place it, hit escape a couple times to get out of the tool, and then add a parameter for glazing thickness. And don't forget to add a um, equally constraining dimension to make sure that the glass is always centered on the center line as well. So I'll place one more dimension from the front of the glass to the center to the back of the glass, click to place, and then equally constrain. Now that that's done, um, I'll go to the elevation again, the placement side elevation, to lay down the parameters for um, its width and height. So use the dimension tool, starting from the left side, go all the way over to the right side, click to place, hit escape a couple times, select the dimension, and then under the label pull down, you can see that because the window category has already been defined, it's already placed some um, parameters in here for you to use. So go ahead and call it out as our rough width. Don't forget to um, place a dimension that will um, equally constrain the center so it always stays in the center of the window. So I'm um, grabbing the dimension tool again from the left to the middle to the right. Click to place it and hit EQ. Now I'll do the same for the height. And this time I'll grab the rough height parameter. From here, um, finally, I just want to place uh, dimensions for the frame's thickness. So using the dimension tool, place it at each spot. And since the, the frame thickness will be consistent for all around, I can grab them all at the same time using the control key and use the label, I'll just grab, I'll add the parameter for frame thickness. And now they'll all change at the same time. And I'll go ahead and add a separate parameter for the center muttons. Grab those together and that can be uh, mutton thickness. And don't forget to um, equally constrain the mutton thickness edges around the center as well. Otherwise, uh, they won't stay centered when the width changes. So again, you'll just equally constrain that center line to this mutton thickness as well. I'll just pull it out out of the way. Hit EQ. And do the same um, for the horizontal one. I almost forgot one parameter. Uh, we want to lay down a parameter for the offset from, from it from the face of the wall so we can shift it into place later. So I'll go back to the floor plan view. And then I'll place a dimension from the face of the wall to the face of the frame. So using the dimension tool, I need to hover over the front face of the wall and, and just use the tab key until I find what's called the wall edge reference. And that's what I can dimension from. You don't want to dimension from the wall itself, but rather from its, its reference plane. Click to find it, and then click again for the front face of the frame. Now select the dimension, and then add the parameter, and I'll just call it offset. And instead of a type parameter, I want this to be an instance parameter. 
because um, that offset may vary depending on where in your building that that window is placed. And so you don't want them all to change um, with the type, but rather at each in instance. Now that the parameters have been placed, um, it's you, you should uh, test the parameters and flex them before you start drawing the geometry of the window. So going back into a elevation view, I'll go to the family types button in the top left corner. Click on it, brings open all our parameters we've created. And I'll just start adjusting them here. And you can see it's, it's um, looks like everything's uh, working right. Now that you've tested everything, it's time to start actually drawing out the uh, geometry of the window. Uh, to do that, I use an extrusion, just like in the uh, previous video. So I go to Home, grab Extrusion, which brings us into an edit mode. And here I'll draw out the frame first. So using the rectangle tool, I'll lay out what will be the outside of the frame, and then I'll lay out what will be the inside of the frame. And here um, I'll align and, and, and lock these edges to the reference planes we've created so that the frame moves with our parameters. So using the align tool, I'll just come through and align and lock everything to the outside. And then the inside. So now, now that you're done aligning and locking everything in elevation, you can click the, the green button, the check button, to get out of the edit mode. And since it is a 3D frame, you got to go to a plan view to uh, unlock the front and the back. So I go back to a floor plan view. And you should be able to see the frame uh, that's been created with the arbitrary depth. So just use the align tool to align its back side and lock it and its front side. Now I'll go back to the front view again. And this time I'll create a separate extrusion for the muttons. So I'll go to Home, Extrusion, and then just start laying them out. And these do have to be a closed loop so nothing can cross over itself. Once the shape has been laid out, I'll go ahead and align and lock. And remember to make sure you align and lock to reference planes, not to other geometry. So grab the reference plane itself and lock it in place. and click uh, the green button to get out of there and then go back to a floor plan view and align and, and lock the muttons in place. Uh, in this model, the muttons are going to be the same depth as the frame, but you could have laid down new reference planes um, for a separate depth for, for them as well. So go back. And finally, let's lay down, uh, you need to lay down uh, extrusion for the glass. So clicking extrusion again. So lay down uh, the rectangle tool for the shape and lock it to the inside of the frame reference planes. Click OK. Go to a floor plan and you should be able to see your glass where you can lock it to the front and back glass reference planes. You might have to use the tab key to toggle to get to the edge. Now that all the parts have been um, created using the extrusion tool, um, I'll go ahead and um, bring the offset to zero to bring it back into the wall. So I'll click on the, the family types button and under our offset, make it zero. That should shift the window back to where it should be. If you go to a 3D view, you can see what you've created so far. 
And unfortunately, um, there's no hole for the window to cut through. That's because you have to create that separately. So to do that, go back to the placement elevation view. And now we're going to create uh, an opening. And the opening um, has to move with the size of the window. So when you go to the Home tab, this time choose Opening. Brings you into a, a sketch mode, just like the extrusions. And we're going to make that opening uh, go around the outside of the window. And to make it move, to make that opening shift with the size of the window, just align and lock it in place. And hit finish. The opening is automatically the size of the depth of the wall. From here, just individually, you can create uh, material parameters for each individual uh, frame, mutton, and glass um, extrusion, which I've covered in the last video.